Hi guys, welcome back to DC Sanita YouTube channel. Hope you are doing good in life. So let's see the third question that came in lead code bi-weekly contest 116. So let's start. So let's first read what the question says. You're given a zero indexed array uh, integers, that's nums and an integer target. Okay. So you've written the length of the longest subsequence of num that sums up to target. If no such subsequence exists, just written minus one. Here the question arises, what is a subsequence? So let's first see what is a subsequence. Then let's proceed on to understand the rest of the solution. Suppose I take an example like one, two, three, four, five. So subsequence is something like if I remove elements from the beginning, or from the end or from the middle if I remove this element if I remove this element or I remove this element it's okay it would form a sequence but one thing that has to make sure the sequence of the number placed here has to be same like if you remove 3 it would form 2 4 you can write a subsequence to be 1 3 5 but you cannot write a subsequence to be 5 1 2 this is wrong this thing is wrong because it is not following the sequence it has to follow the sequence proper sequence following the proper sequence you can remove any element so this is the first thing that needs to be made sure uh, by understanding what is a sequence then let's move to understand the rest of the solution here you can see that we have to return the maximum element what written the maximum size of subsequence if the example it's one two three four five we have to return the one three five that has the maximum size so if we uh, see the constraints yeah so if you see the constraints you can see that it's kind of a dynamic it will somewhere it will involve dynamic programming dp so you can guess it from here Otherwise, also you can guess it. So let's start understanding how would we approach and how would we solving this question. Let's come to Notepad. Yep. Okay. I have two scenarios. Okay. I have how many scenarios? Two. That's A. That's B. Okay. First scenario goes as. 1 plus solution of i plus 1 that's 1 plus i plus 1 i 0 0 so i 1 i 2 that's like counter it's like goes on and k that's a target minus vector i and in the second case it's solution i plus 1 because you have to always do i plus 1 because it's the counter types so i plus 1 and k again the target i think most of you must have known what i am doing it's called the snap the knapsack algorithm okay it's called the knapsack algorithm so what we are doing is we are dividing into two scenarios we are dividing into two scenarios either we include first we include then we exclude okay first we include then we exclude so i would explain how we are including and how we are excluding in this in a you can see first we include here we first include here so here we are subtracting and we are excluding okay and in b you can see we are not including we are not subtracting okay so these are the two cases that we are going to face okay so for let's take the example and see what happens and how to make the logic and how to implement the following logic suppose i take for example 4 1 3 2 1 5 okay? so let's make the tree and understand how will the memorization and the dp work okay 
let's uh, write a bit in slow. Okay, small t. So first case, we take f of zero comma seven. So what is it? Is the i and this is the sum. Okay. So for zeroth index, we are taking the sum to be seven. Okay. Now it's on us for four if we have to include or not. So I will divide the condition for four. We would be including ones. That is one plus f of one plus three. How one plus three? You have seen that i plus one and seven. What is three? Three is nothing but k minus v of i. That is seven minus four. You can see here the target is seven. The target, the target is seven. Uh, initially, sorry, I did a mistake and I said it to be sum. It's the target. Okay. Target is seven and this v of i, v of i that is equal to four. So it's going to be three. Okay, seven minus four. I have shown you here this thing, this condition. It's a. I minus I plus one and K minus V I. Okay. Now let's see. Let's move it out. Yeah. Yes. So if we include it, we will be reaching this condition. Then if we include it once more for one, okay, for one we include it. Let me take some another pen. One we take include it. So it would be one plus f of two comma two. Then if again we include again, sorry, again we include, we will end up with one plus f of three comma minus one. And if we don't include. I will end up with f of two comma two. Sorry for the bad handwriting. And if we don't uh, include in this case, in this case, that is the fourth. We would end up with four of two comma three. And of course, I'm writing it out. And if we include in this case, we will be getting f of three comma zero. So we can see something very clearly. Initially. Initially, first I included. Okay, what I did was first I included. In this case, I would make another place where I would exclude also f of one comma seven. I would see that case. We would see that case. First I included. From the included part, what I made was two parts. First I included in one step. I included in one I didn't include. Okay, in this thing also we had two parts. We included and we excluded. Okay, so when we reach minus one, what does this signify? That if my index has reached um, zero, that my index has reached zero, but we have not reached the target yet. I would be writing it down. Index reached. Zero, but not target hit. So what we would return? We would return int minimum. Okay, we would return an int minimum. Okay. So why would we returning int minimum? I would explain in the code. Why would we doing this? Okay, we are returning int minimum, and this thing. Is going to be our base condition. This thing is going to be our base condition. Okay, sorry, it got removed. Yep, and same goes for this. And when it became zero, this thing is different. Okay, when it became zero, what we have to do is we would simply return it. Because the target can't be zero because we are adding things, we will simply return it to the earlier condition. And now we'll see how memorization works. Like we have done all this, 
now we when we are here when we have not included in f of 0 comma 7 that we get f of 1 comma 7 then we move on to get we include f of 2 comma 6 again 1 plus f of 3 comma uh, 1 plus f of 3 comma 3 and again f of 3 comma 3 so you can see something very clearly these two conditions these two conditions are overlapping conditions okay these two conditions are overlapping so this is where memorization come memorization comes in play okay these two conditions are overlapping conditions so we will now going to see the code how the code works and what is happening in the code let me bring the code yeah so what i am doing is first we are taking a dp we are taking a dp of 1000 because we have got constraints of 1000 that's why we are taking a dp of 1000 1000 we are taking two parameters because the parameters those are changing for me are int i and int t that is the index that's i and that's a target that's t okay if t equal to 0 i explained you wait a second uh, sorry yeah yes so here you can see just uh, see what i am where i am pointing so here you can see okay let me take another color so you can see when we had zero sorry another color works this thing does not work this thing works rainbow color should work yeah so uh, when t equal to zero here when t equal to a 0, we return a 0, okay? So, this is the condition. If t is less than 0, if, if i is greater than or equal to v dot size, we return int minimum. I explained to you here, we return an int minimum. You can see why we return an int minimum. Because we have already reached index 0 and still we have not got a target. That's why we return int minimum. And do you think int minimum will overflow okay let me come to this point if we subtract something from int minimum then it will overflow okay if we subtract something but if we add something it will over okay if we subtract something it will overflow if we add something it will go to the positive side and you can see here we are adding things not we are subtracting so int minimum return will work its best then comes the logic we have two base two conditions if a is equal to one plus solve of this if b is equal to solve of this and we have to return the maximum as i explained you all the logic here you are returning the maximum and here i have defined a mem set and the dp of thousand so this is how the solution works and this is how we would be implementing the uh, dynamic programming i would be submitting it let's see if it works or not and yes it worked so i hope you understood the solution if you did please hit that like button and subscribe to this is indeed a youtube channel with this bye bye take care